find that grading policy, of course, if you go uh, to the home page and then go into the course administration folder. Um, it's right there, just with all the other course administration. Okay, so um, I believe we ended on uh, talking about concentration. Remember, concentration is the amount of solute that is dissolved in a given amount of solution. So the amount of solute, this could be like moles, moles of solute, or grams of solute. Oh, and I have some blank copies of the exams up here, exam A and exam B, if you want to take one home. Um, so this could be moles of solute, grams of solute. It depends really uh, what concentration unit the problem is asking for, whether you're going to be using gra grams, moles, or the different uh, units. But it's always going to be amount of solute and a uh, given amount of solvent or solution. Uh, again, the concentration of a solution has an effect both physically and chemically. And I believe we talked about that at the end of last uh, class. So recall the chemical equation tells us the number of moles. So this is the mole ratio, right? So if uh, this one's relatively simple, so, uh, sodium chloride, the number of moles of sodium chloride will equal the number of moles, moles of sodium and the number of moles of chlorine. But let's look at something a little more, um, uh, takes a little more work to figure out. So magnesium chloride, of course, uh, magnesium has a two plus oxidation state and chlorine has a minus one. So you're going to have a, you know, uh, more um, elaborate formula than with sodium chloride. So when we dissolve this into water, what do we get? We get the magnesium plus ion plus two chlorine ions. So recall, if I said, well, we have, I don't know, 0 0.12 moles of magnesium chloride, and I ask, well, how many moles of chloride ions do we have? Okay, remember the chemical equation here, this is going to give us the ratio of moles to moles. So we're looking for chloride relative to magnesium chloride. So for every one mole magnesium chloride, it's going to equal two moles of chloride ions. So remember, if we want to cancel out moles of magnesium chloride, we got to put moles of magnesium chloride on the bottom. CL minus ion. Want to calculate that out? Zero two four moles CL minus ion. Okay? So recall that you can do that with the chemical equation. Okay. So what you'll find is not only is it going to be mole to mole, but when we look at this next concentration here, or the first concentration that we're going to learn, molarity, this capital M is the symbol for molarity. Okay, so molarity equals the number of moles of solute divided by the liters of solution. So let's say we, let's keep thinking about this solution here and say we had um, the volume of the solution was, I don't know, 2.00 liters. Now remember, the number of moles of magnesium chloride we had in that 2 liters was 0 0.2 moles. So 
So let's figure out the molarity here. Molarity, remember, is equal to the number of moles over the volume in liters. So the number of moles was 0.12 moles. So this would be a kind of a harder uh, molarity problem. This one would be 
more straightforward. Uh, I'd like you to try those on your own. Okay, so let's talk about diluting solutions, diluting concentrated solutions. So concentrated solutions, that means there's a lot of solute in the solvent, we call concentrated solutions. Um, dilute solutions means there's just a little bit of uh, solute in the solvent. So what you could imagine is if you had a concentrated solution and you added more solvent to that solution, you could dilute that solution, right? So, um, I don't know. That's what people do with, like, I guess, espresso or something like that, if you can imagine. One shot of espresso is like a concentrated thing, and then they dump it in a bunch of hot water or something, if you want. I guess it's called an Americano, right? Or whatever. I don't drink coffee, so... I don't know, but um, that's a good example to think of, <laughs> to take something very concentrated and diluting, okay? So um, how do we figure out what the new molarity is if we dilute something, okay? So that would be something that would be very advantageous to know, especially if you're working with solutions in the chemistry lab, okay? So let's learn how to do that. Let's. Um, and in fact, here up here is the slide that talks about it. So let's refer to the slide really quick. So um, there's, an, uh, there's an equation, a simple equation. So it's uh, very similar to Boyle's law, if you recall that from the gas law chapter, gas law chapter, chapter five. Um, you can say the initial molarity times the initial volume equals the final molarity times the final volume. And let's just make up a problem. Let's say we've got that magnesium chloride solution again, but let's say, um, well, what, what was the final concentration of it? So we had molarity final equals what? One point, oh, uh, that was for chloride, but uh, so 6.0 times 10 to the negative two molar magnesium. That was the concentration. Let's just say that was the final molarity. Okay, let's pretend it was a more concentrated solution and we diluted it to that final molarity. Let's figure out what the initial concentration was. And let's say our final volume, what did we say it was? Two liters? 2.00 liters. And we'll say our initial volume. I don't know. Let's make it 20 milliliters. Okay? So if we had this information, we could figure out what the initial molarity was. Okay? So if I ask this question, I might say, we had a um, dilute solution of magnesium chloride, the concentration being 6.0 times 10 to the negative. Uh, we had two liters of this solution. Uh, this solution was a solution that was initially 20 milliliters um, in volume. What was the initial molarity or something like that? Uh, so let's figure that out. So remember, you use this um, equation MI VI equals MF VF. Okay, we want to isolate this mi variable, so we divide both sides, so we got to get rid of this thing, vi, so we're going to divide both sides by vi. Cancels out, divide something by itself, it cancels out. So our new equation is mi equals mf times vf over so hopefully you guys can do that by now. And then all we do is plug and chug, okay? Well, no, actually, we've got, we've got to convert milliliters to liters. Yeah, sorry, I, I made this problem a little more difficult. But yeah, good job. So um, remember how many milliliters are in a liter? Yeah. 
zero point zero two zero zero liters. Notice we've got liters over liters here. Liters will cancel, giving us what? Molarity. Molarity is a concentration unit, so that's cool. That'll give us what we want, right? So now let's just do this problem.
lot of salt. Um, after a certain point, you're still gonna you're going to have put too much salt into this solution, right? So there's going to be some solid at the bottom. We have ions, right, that have been dissolved. These are also salt, sodium and chloride ions, or whatever you want to think of. Okay, and then these ones are still stuck together, right? But what's happening is these ions they don't always stay in solution, and these ones don't always stay in the solid phase. What you find is that these go out into the solution, and these go back into the solid phase. Okay, at an equal rate. Okay, so the rates are equal. So the rate of one is equal to the negative rate, or what, whatever you want to think of, of the other. Okay, so they're doing opposite things, right? Uh, this is known. This happens a lot in chemistry when you've got phases, different phases interacting with each other. This is called a dynamic. Well, they're doing opposite things, okay. right? I so, sure yeah. Right. So, if you think about, you know, me running just as fast as somebody else is running backwards, right? Okay, you want to think of it kind of like that. Okay. Like they're going the opposite direction as me, so they'd be negative relative to me. Or relative to the direction I was. Okay, we talked about solid solutes. Solid solutes uh, increase their solubility when uh, the temperature is raised of the solution. The opposite is true of gaseous solvent solutes. Okay, gaseous solutes, their um, solubility decreases when the temperature is increased. Just like our example last time of the Coke sitting out all night. You know, you crack open a Coke and drink one sip of it and fall asleep, sit out all night, and what happens, right? The next morning you go to drink some of it and it's all flat. So um, that's because, of course, before it was in the refrigerator, right, and being cold, so all that carbon dioxide was dissolved into that solution. Uh, as you let it sit out overnight, it increased the temperature, not to mention you had the can open, so it was all being able to go out, right? But it increased the temperature, thus decreasing the solubility of that carbon dioxide, which we all know is a gas, right? And um, let it all escape, okay? Therefore, your thing is flat. So let's talk about a new concentration unit. Very similar to molarity, it's called molality. But very similar. <laughs> and instead of um, moles, instead of moles per Molarity is, remember, molarity is big M. Molality is little m. Okay? So mo molality is the moles of solute. So just like molarity, moles of solute over kilograms of solvent. So if you want to compare that to molarity, remember molarity is moles of solute over liters of solution. Okay, so for molarity we're talking about the solution, molality we're talking about specifically the solvent. 
So let's see if we can do this one together. Calculate the molality of a KCL solution containing 52.3 grams of KCL and 301 kilograms of water. So the moles of solute here, do we know that from the problem? Does the problem tell us the moles of solute? Yeah, you got to take the gram, change it to moles, right? So we don't know that yet, but we do know the mass of the solute equals 52.3 grams. What else do we know about that? How, how can we go from here to here? What else do we know about the solute? No, no, no. What else do we know about the solute? How do we go from there to get this answer? That's the molar mass. The molar mass, right? Yeah, the molar mass. We know that. How do we know that? Because the periodic table tells us, right? Okay, so let's calculate that molar mass. 35.45 plus 39.13. Seventy-four point five. So cancel, cancel. One mole, and what do we get? Moles, right? So we take fifty-two point three divided by four, and I got zero point seven. earlier, it gives us the mass of the solvent, which is what, what else we need, right? And it's 3.01 kilograms. Okay, and conveniently enough, it gave, us, gave it to us in kilograms, so we don't have to convert something else to kilograms. So, molality, now just plug in your numbers and solve the problem. 072 mole divided by 3.01 kilograms. It just keeps coming back and back and back. So you've already learned everything you need to know. So if you already learned it, then you're like free sailing. You just need to learn these new equations, okay? And just plug them in, plug these numbers in, okay? So this is, this is why chemistry is kind of comprehensive because it just keeps going back in circles, going back in circles, going back in circles and getting a little bit harder every time, okay? And looking at, analyzing a new thing every time. So, of course, those aren't the only concentrations that you will see. Um, those concentrations actually are more chemistry-oriented concentrations, okay? So for those of you who are looking to work in, you know, the various health fields or whatever, probably won't see very much molar concentration and molal concentration, but probably see more of percent weight volume uh, concentration. In fact, if you look, go look at your medicines at home, a lot of medicines that are in what we would call liquid form are just actually an aqueous solution. And it'll say, you know, this is a 0.15% solution of X or whatever, okay? So you can go and look at them, it'll, I'll say that. Like go look at your Pepto-Bismol or something, it's like, you know, bismuth chloride, uh, some solution of bismuth chloride. Or, I don't know, just all of, all of them. It, it, starts, it starts really um, becoming, uh, I don't know, uh, you, 
can actually start seeing chemistry with, within uh, everyday society um, by using these concentrations. And hopefully by now you're able to start noticing more and more about this class in your everyday world. That's what you always want to keep thinking about, too, is that chemistry really is everything. So um, if you ever thought that chemistry never affected your life, it really affects everything about your life. In fact, even you is chemistry, you know? You are like some solution, honestly, you know? We're all, I don't know, 70% water solution. Um, but anyways, let's look at... Uh, Percent weight volume. Um, let's see, do we have, yeah. So remember it's going to be grams of solute over milliliters of solution. So again, this is very similar to the concentration units um, that we learned before, molarity. Instead of moles, it's grams. And instead of liters, it's milliliters. Okay? And then you multiply by 100. So um, let's see. If Let's try this one here. Uh, calculate the number of grams of glucose and 750 mils of a 15% solution. So what did we say? Percent weight volume equals, what was this? Grams of solute, right? Over mils of solution times 100%. So what do we know? Let's look at this bottom one here. We know the volume of the solution, right? And in mils, conveniently, so 750 